Back in the day, people thought, um, you know, if you have PKD, there's nothing you can do. You know, you kind of stuck with it, um, and um, that you know, there's nothing you can do yourself. Um, go away, come back, you know, in a year, <laughs> or come back when your kidneys are about to fail. Um, that kind of thing. Um, how often do you hear that? Those kind of stories. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> hello everyone, uh, Thomas Wimes here um, with Jeff Robertson from the uh, PKD Foundation of um, Canada. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> All right, um, so Jeff just stopped by, um, so we had the um, ASN Kidney Week conference, uh, Jeff stopped by um, the Santa Barbara Nutrients booth and we thought we'll have a little chat about um, PKD, let's say, <clears throat> um, obviously. Um, so, you know, something that, that's always kind of on, on my mind um, is, you know, some of the myths out there, <clears throat> I would say, where, you know, sort of like old thinking, if you will, you know, back in the day, people thought, um, you know, if you have PKD, there's nothing you can do, you know, you kind of stuck with it um, and, um, that, you know, there's nothing you can do yourself. Um, go away, come back, you know, in a year, <laughs> or come back when your kidneys are about to fail, um, that kind of thing. Um, how often do you hear that, those kind of stories? Too? It's still quite common, uh, unfortunately. And then, you know, we were chatting earlier today that the it, it was for so long, there wasn't really much um, that could be done. So nephrologists would see the patient, um, check everything, and then it was see you in a year. You know, watch your salt, uh, drink your water, um, there were various, you know, misconceptions about caffeine intake and that. Um, so it's going to take quite a bit of time, uh, I think, to shift the, the paradigm over uh, to what is now available. And as a, a patient support foundation, we uh, do our best to try and dispel those myths um, and let people know that there are options out there now. Of course, you know, in Canada, since 2015, there's been a treatment option available uh, for ADPKD. Um, there's more recognition to the impact of diet and exercise and environmental factors. Um, so it's, it's an ongoing battle. Um, it's going to take some time to get that that mindset shifted um, but I think now in this day and age and with social media and with with you guys on the market now that that people are starting to recognize that there is more that can be done okay excellent yeah so I literally <clears throat> hear this almost daily on, on social media where, where patients say hey my doctor told me you know there's nothing I can do you know there's no diet has ever been proven to make a difference you know which technically I guess that's correct um, practically I think that's completely outdated <laughs> advice um, yeah. and um, you know there's a lot that, that people can do to, uh, to just increase their overall health um, um, you know lose weight um, experiment with, with diets um, you know ketogenic diets and things yeah. like that uh, yeah. where now at these, this particular conference for example there's like brand new data that all came out um, good so what, what would do you normally tell patients that come to the PKD Foundation of Canada um, where do you leave? send them to? <laughs> well, uh, there's uh, thankfully in, in the specialty clinics in Canada now there's a lot more involvement from uh, renal dietitians and nutritions so I think it's important for people to recognize um, what's within their wheelhouse of being able to do you know is, is keto something that they can they can manage on an ongoing basis um, there's a lot of people that experiment that that balance between uh, vegetarian and vegan lifestyle versus those with the meat intake um, you touched on you know weight management and exercise is, is vital um, so making sure that someone has a, a program in place um, to to assist with that is is very important but now you know it's 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 staying on top of, of the research that's being done you know there was a lot of developments and and especially with respect to uh, keto at this at this conference I think it's more important for people to to stay in the know um, to follow the reputable uh, news sources patient foundations their nephrologists um, there's a lot of misconceptions misinformation online uh, so you have to be really careful so I think it's it's important that people um, the best advice I can give is that they check their resources, right? And that they find something that can work for them. 
Um, moderation is key, you know, but it's it's one of those things, and we talked about this this morning over breakfast. Is it it has to there there has to be a plan that they can manage, ongoing. Nothing is nothing is going to be advantageous if if they burn out on on a diet or a crash diet or or something isn't manageable. So it's very important that that you understand what you're you're capable of taking on, um, and you take it in progressive steps. And I think that that will be the the success for the long term. Great, excellent. Um, are there any other myths you can think of that that you hear, you know, from patients, um, you know, outdated advice that they're getting and so on? Uh, I think that the diet is is one of the largest ones um, for sure. I think it's important that people um, recognize the value of of peer to peer connection, and I think that that's something that that we need to to shift the conversation. Is that there are community supports out there? Um, a lot of people still try and uh, to to manage the disease themselves um, and keep it to themselves. And there's a whole community out there. The PKD community out there um, is one of the most supportive communities I've ever been a part of. So I think getting involved and in, in staying engaged with other people will help make your diagnosis uh, more manageable and, and approachable. And, and hearing from other people's journeys, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, um, is very important because if you have, um, if you have a very closed-minded approach or a very limited understanding of what living with PKD is like, you only have a snapshot of what could potentially happen. Um, so getting people out there and, and hearing from the patients themselves, that's the best way to, to dispel myths and rumors, right, is hearing from the community themselves. Good, excellent. Um, yeah, so if you're a patient out there, stay engaged. Um, there are, um, you know, there are peer support groups, if yeah. you will. Um, um, there's, you know, the PKD Foundation of Canada. If you're in Canada, <clears throat> there are other PKD foundations in other countries as well. Um, great, um, good. So I would say um, feel free to reach out. Um, if you can't, um, don't know how to reach Jeff, um, reach out to me um, and I will forward um, any inquiries uh, to you. NPKD.ca uh, is our website. So that has all of our contact information, local support chapters as well. So www.npkd.ca. Great. Thank you, Jeff.